You're here live with Hodahori casting this scrim between Beehive and Quacodiles. I will be test commentating today, and on Dorado, we will have... Looks like Beehive on defense first. We have Hodahori going on the Reinhardt. Uh, Pulse going on the Tracer, and Shadowcat on her Mercy. Razarip just messing around. He's not going to pick Doomfist. He will be either Junkrat or the Hanzo, as we all know. Uh, Pulse looks like he's going to go Soldier, though, at the very beginning. Uh, assembling the team, trying to get everybody together. McCreasy will go Reaper. Rangrith probably will be a second healer or the Sombra, and Razarip will be the third DPS. So... As we move out here, we are looking first-person view from Hodohori's standpoint. He will be the tank Reinhardt main tank. He's actually going to look like he's going to switch to the Zarya, letting Raza Rip going to the main tank Reinhardt. Very interesting. They're probably doing this to increase damage and to basically protect Raza if he charges himself into a bad situation. So... Typical defense here, you will start off at the top of the ledge and wait for the team to come around on the payload. Now, teams have to be careful, as uh, teams can get access to the top ledge by flanking all the way around and underneath uh, and getting access to the team. So there is a little bit of danger defending up here. Uh, I've seen teams also defend on the bridge over the overpass and then just basically drop down right on the team exactly to, to avoid getting shot. Now, that will happen if a team has something like a Bastion or something like that, but if you have attacking DPS that is actually going to try to flank them, they will come around. Now, looks like uh, Quacodiles has actually come out, and it looks like they're all coming down to flank, trying to dislodge the entire team. Uh, their entire team basically just tried to get them off the ledge and basically move that cart in time to get it around, but I think they attacked a little too early. Uh, Quacodiles needed that cart to be a little closer to the bridge before they attacked in order to get that through. And now it looks like they are stalled on the back end here. Raza Rip doing his hammer thing, making sure that he is being very aggressive with their front line. Hodohori staying just behind, making sure that he can shield him and take over whenever Raza gets low, keeping him at... Uh, 80 energy or above, and that's exactly what he's trying to do here. He's at 95 and going forward and doing his thing. Raza's keeping that shield up, making sure he's a very good defensive shield. Uh, grenade coming in, uh, purpling the rest of the team now. Looks like they are backing up. Cart is now stalled underneath the uh, the passageway, and they know that they're dealing with a high energy Zarya and a Reinhardt, who is not super, super aggressive, so therefore they know to back off the, uh, the DPS from... Beehive, knowing exactly that they should be pushing up, making sure that they get them in the middle of the retreat. So, uh, Quacodile's now in the middle of full retreat, coming through. They've gone pharmacy now. It looks like trying to dislodge the tank line here. Uh, shields now coming through. They still haven't made any progress on the payload as it still consistently keeps rolling back. Uh, Raza drops down from above, makes sure that he gets the choke entirely, and they're just basically stalled here, and there's nothing they can really do. Uh, Raza making sure that he just does not get into a situation where he gets too low, uh, which is very, very good. And uh, Hodohori and him are switching back and forth very, very nicely. Graviton comes out. Looks like they uh, countered it with a drop of the beat, but it looks like they're still going to get some kills here. Bear goes down. Rangrith gets a grenade. Uh, dis uh, dis uh, Ah, excuse me, Demex Yuri hands, and Alifant goes down, and that, it looks like that will be it for the push. Bear got resurrected, but there's really nothing that she can do by herself, so she's going back to the point. Good Graviton there, uh, just to basically stall at the point. 1.30 left on the clock, and unexpectedly, it looks like Quacodiles are very, very stalled here at the, uh, at the choke, and uh, they rotated, Beehive has, back up to the top anticipating another uh, sort of hard push. They switch to the Reaper, and they know that uh, if they're going to try to take out these tanks, they're going to have to try to get in close in. Combine that with the uh, the, the Pharaoh that Bear is on, and I think that they've got this sort of good combination. Hodohori jumps back down, tries to stall, just basically to stall the payload exactly right on the on the point here. A Diva bomb coming through, gets Hodohori, but he saves Raza. Uh, Rez coming through from Shadowcat as she was around the corner. Good Earth Shatter there. Catches everybody in the front. Raza in there is now protected. He's making sure that he's not going to get hit and get d done so much damage. Choke again. 
Uh, Bear is trying to do her best to basically dislodge everybody in the front there, but it's not necessarily working out too well, as that cart hasn't really moved from underneath the bridge. But, ooh, Jane with a Y getting a three-man uh, Reaper ult basically takes out the whole back line. Beehives are... It takes out the whole front line, excuse me. Beehives have to disengage, and they're probably just going to take, let him have first point. And that was actually a good stall. Took out most of the clock there. It was about 11 seconds left before they actually got the point. 2.36 left on the clock. And now, Beehive are now trying to establish the high ground. Uh, Yuri Hands comes up with her diva, but with that Zarya up there, there is no way that she's going to be able to establish herself. The Reaper tries to come up and try to help, but Reaper gets dislodged also. So most of the team is now going to be on top. Looks like they're going to probably be behind the shield, at least until it turns the corner to, to allow Beehive to sort of do their thing. Oh! Yuri Hands goes back up, but Horohori drops down in a, as a mistake. Now he's on the payload by himself, preventing it from moving, and it looks like a... Shadow pulls out the Valkyrie to just sort of save some of the people in the back line. Rangwraith got dived on. Horohori gets killed in the front, but he's still in the front. Now he's going to have to back off as the team now is fully established on their attack. Uh, he bubbles Razorat, making sure that he has enough energy to basically start to stand up there and make sure that he can survive. They're coming around to the second overpass here as Dorado is a game of overpasses. Uh, the, the switches between Horohori and, and Raza look very, very good. Uh, it looks like that they're trying to make sure that uh, Raza stays alive as much as he can. He does not have very much time on Reinhardt, so making sure that he is alive and well is going to be in as an advantage. He gets nano-boosted and charges in, gets into their back line, and three kills comes out directly for Beehive, and a Graviton in the back uh, gets the monkey also, and Jane with a Y, so therefore their attack is now done. One minute left on the clock. 109, excuse me, left on the clock. And it looks like Quagadile's here in a bit of a jam. They've got it stalled in a location that is a hell of a long walk. It's not exactly right before third point, but it's pretty much right there. This is not a good spot for them at all. It's very defendable. And uh, very, very hard to break if uh, Beehive established the high ground again. It looks like uh, Hodori will stay on payload, make sure that they don't any back up in any way. Uh, Raza Rip drops down from the high ground, and it looks like he's trying to do his best to sort of do his tanking thing. And uh, they're charging in with both the Diva and the... Uh, and the Reaper trying to get in. The monkey's now diving in. Alley on the monkey. Uh, Yuri Hands gets a self-destruct in the back line. Aliphant then gets a Hodohori, but it looks like Raza picked up Jane with a Y, and Pulse has picked up and demeked Yuri Hands. So it looks like we've got Rezus coming in. Uh, Valkyrie popped on uh, the side of Quacodiles. Aliphant gets Shadow Cat in the back line. So this might be a push onto their part here, but uh, it still hasn't moved yet because it's still contested. They're fighting their best, and it, we're going to go into overtime here on the, the second point. Yuri Hands and the uh, Yuri Hands and Alifant, the two frontline tanks, are trying to hold this back as, as much as they can, and the fight is just going to continue. Shield it up now, and it looks like Beehive has decided that they will hold here on this point. Uh, Hodohori goes down to the Reaper ult, so does Pulse, but it looks like Hodohori is going to get re revived, and he's he's going to be focusing mainly on the tanks. They're going with a full triple tank formation. Hodohori gets killed again. And Raza Rip now uh, is trying to do his best to sort of stall, and Hodohori gets rezzed for a second time. Uh, has to say thank you to uh, thank you to Shadow Cat in that particular case, but the the kills are not going their way. But they're still holding, and that thing has not moved with the spawn advantage directly with with Beehive. So they're going to be coming in faster and faster as this comes along. Uh, Diva Bomb up in the air takes out Rangrith, who was basically hiding up top. Hodohori dies for a third time. It looks like, and they will get the second point. So second point has been established, but a lot of time burned in overtime. So there was about a minute 15, and there is a decent stall here at the front gate. So therefore, that thing is not going to move very far, uh, and they'll have a chance to establish high ground in the minute that they have before the thing rolls, sort of the payload sort of rolls in. Bears in with her... Uh, with their fair to establish. It looks like the, the high ground is there, making sure that they're not moving. Hodohori drops directly under the payload. The Mercy is super low. She's got to be careful. And Cineskill does go down. Uh, Raza Rip with the nano boost, just wreaking havoc in the back line. 44 seconds left on the cock. Graviton now up for Hodohori. He's got to look for a, a good spot to use it. Can't use it early. I think he might want to save it towards the very end uh, just to stall out the push. 
33 seconds left. It looks like Beehive are going to reestablish back on the point, and they're going to uh, make it like sort of one last go. If they can get a successful kill and push in overtime, it will stall the spawns out for Beehive, and they could move this a significant way before they get uh, they get re-engaged upon. So here, let's see how this goes. Rangworth pushing up, trying to make sure. 10 seconds left. They're going to get on the payload here. They're not going to see 9 There's no way. Uh, and there it is. Uh, overtime will start in five, uh, protecting the backline here. They're trying to push up as much as they can. Hodohori is stalling on the payload, not letting him go. He gets killed, though, with his Graviton, so that's not good. They're, they're all capped up on the point. He drops it directly on the ground to make sure that he does not get eaten by a... By, by a defense matrix, and uh, Crazy takes out three with the help of the Graviton, and that's going to be it. Team kill for Beehive, and the payload stops exactly just maybe 50 meters past uh, the front door. Good defense there by Beehive. Didn't even get it past the, uh, the third overpass. So two points for Quokadiles. And now Beehive on the attack. What will they pull out here? McCreasy probably going to be going on his widow. Uh, Hodohori now is going to main tank with Raza Rip on the Bastion. They're gonna go El Presidente. It looks like with triple flank with double flankers and a sniper. So the strategy here is that uh, the the Reinhardt and the Bastion will stay on the payload. As they come around the corner, the team will see the Bastion and basically shield up. Try not to like, a team could be aggressive and basically try to dive on the Bastion, but that could be suicide. You don't want to get picked off. The idea with the, with the other three DPS is for them to put pressure. As soon as that shield goes down, the sniper will be taking out anybody who's not covered by the shield while the two flankers press on their back line in order for the defending team, and in this case, Quokadiles, to make a decision as to what they want to do. Do they want to drop into the line of fire of the Bastion, or do they want to take out the two flankers and stay up top? If they stay up top, the cart will continue to push through and get past the choke area, which will give a distinct advantage to the attacking team because it will not give be, uh, excuse me, Quokadiles a position that is very defensible. So the whole idea here is the Bastion is used for the first push and to to get them through some of one of the one of the harder chokes here in Overwatch and we'll, we're going to see here what they're going to do with regards to this strategy. So it's going to be a bit of a surprise because no team's really going to expect a Bastion uh, in a scrim. So Raza establishes himself right right there, right on the payload, and Hodohori puts his shield in front. Two thousand point shield going up. Here they come. Raz is going to just basically try to destroy that shield as early as they can. Uh, and with the boost from Shadow, here comes Rangrith on the push. They're going to push all the way back. It looks like they've decided to basically uh, abandon the top line, and they're going to push through. It doesn't look like that they're, the front line is going to be it. It looks like they might possibly drop on, on Raza, but no, they've got the cart all the way through. The strategy has worked. It's gotten past the point where they need to, and kills coming left and right for... Uh, <laughs> for the beehive, and they're going to take this point super easy. Well, there's only one person left, and I think that's Yuri Hands on, on the Zarya, and two kills comes through from the flankers from Bear and Pulse, and they're going to get point one in record time here. Uh, they did not expect a Bastion at all, and that strategy worked perfect. Ali... Ali's team was just not ready for it. It looks like Rangrith picks up Cinescule in the back. She is going to be uh, split spawn really, really badly, but Rangrith got picked off by Alifant, but they've lost their healer. So they've lost their main healer here, and with the two flankers pushing far, far up, they're going to push this team really, really far back. And it's just going to give them a hell of a time. Ali gets picked up by Raza, and this this El Presidente formation is still going through to to the front line, and is still taking out every shield possible. So uh, they're they're just getting so much time available here. What it, what it looks like, they're they're going to get all the way to the second, almost second point with El Presidente, which is way farther than we think as a team. Uh, Ali's on top, but they're just sort of confused. They don't know what to do. They're trying to sort of trying to dislodge him, but they're trying to deal with the flankers at the same time, and it's really, really hard for them to deal with this fort for formation. Yuri Hands get chopped down by Hodohori, and, and, and Jane with a Y gets knocked and killed by Razarif. 
Oh, goodness, they're going to get point two. And Ali comes out on the Orisa trying to establish another shield. That's not going to happen. And they push all the way through with 543 left on the third point. And they literally have to get it through the door and around the corner. And that's it. But with a closer a closer uh, attack area here, it's going to be very, very hard for uh, for Beehive basically to get it around this corner because they have the advantage. They have the spawn advantage. They have the uh, the location advantage. Bastion's not necessarily that great in locations in his night, but they're almost there. Here, here they come. It looks like Bear's going to come in with rockets. They're going to come in with a transcendence. They're blowing alts all over the place, it looks like here. Uh, Alifant is super, super low on the... Uh, she goes down. The Zarya is super low. Hodohori now tanking. It looks like Raza has been killed. He was res. They're trying to establish him back on the point with the res, but it looks like uh, Yuri Hands will uh, will self destruct and kill McCreezy. And that's going to be it. Push. That's going to be it for the push. I think Raza's going to try to take somebody down here. They took down Bear, uh, so they won't have Bear for the next ten seconds. Hodohori is going to be trying to come back. Uh, to make sure, but they're going to be switching off to a more standard comp here to get through this sort of section. Yuri Hands gets eliminated by a fire strike that was just sort of thrown in to, to get some damage. Hodohori's pushing off, but it looks like he's trying to draw Ali back uh, that's on the, on the Roadhog. He's going back. Basically, just shield gets destroyed. They're going to come back. They're not going to push until the shield recharges. Raza now has switched uh, to the Junkrat uh, for the closer in damage, I think. Flankers are still up, and they're still pushing in. McCreezy's still on the Widow here, and still having to, uh, and with, uh, and Bear gets picked off. They still don't know how to deal with McCreezy's Widow, because he, he ran havoc on them on Temple of Anubis, and it was just, it was, it was chaos for them. They just could not establish a proper offense, and they had to take it into overtime, essentially, to take Anubis out. They're grouped up together now. Oh, Hodo, which is he so had at Earth Shatter. He would have taken out four. He's just trying to basically stay front line and sort of whack away, making sure he's building up his ult as much as he can. Roadhog now in the back, ulting. He takes Jane with a Y down. Didn't turn around. Uh, Yuri Hands gets... Jane with a Y gets rezzed. Earth Shatter coming through. Gets the back line. And it looks like it look Till's coming down. Rangrith comes in with the blade. Jane with a Y still trying to hold as long as he can. Uh, Zanyata ult coming out. Siniskill gets killed out. Hodori just swinging wildly. <laughs> Shadowcat takes out Bear in the air with McCreezy, and that and he she gets rezzed, and that's gonna do it, folks. That's gonna oh no! Uh, the, Yuri Hands gets back on the payload, but she's gonna get focused on. She was the one that died first. She gets demeked and dies right away, and that is definitely going to be it. GG to everyone. Uh, Beehive wins uh, their scrim on Dorado with four men on fire. Unreal. And Shadowcat getting play of the game. <laughs> Looks like here it was going to be a crazy res. Yes, it's a res on Rangrith along with the Rez on Hodohori that led into the Graviton and everybody getting taken out. Great play by Shadow there, uh, realizing that popping uh, popping Valkyrie right there saved the team. Great, uh, great plays by everyone. But that's going to do it. Uh, Beehive wins their final scrim here after losing four straight uh, to uh, Division 5 team Quokadiles. But... They're in a higher division, higher SR, higher skilled players. You're, it's bound to happen, but towards the end there, Beehive definitely pulling out the pulling out the uh, pulling out uh, the 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 Widowmaker really confused them. So this has been Hodohori for this cast of the Dorado scrim between Quokadiles and Beehive. Thank you very much for joining me today, and have a good day.